around the state of Texas right now trying to find as many football players as he possibly ah! can. Joining us on the Burns and Gambo Show, the head coach of the 3-0 for the first time since 2019. Say it again. Sun Devils. Uh, 3-0 and for the first time since 2019. Kenny Dillingham joining us here on the Burns and Gambo Show. Congrats on the big win, coach. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm out here in El Paso, uh, Texas right now about to go watch some high school football. Yeah, we're all fired up after that win. But uh, I, you know, I got a message from somebody at ASU. They're like, yeah, he's out at a high school at 7 a.m. Do you ever sleep? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Just not last night. <laughs> not last <laughs> night. Normally I do sleep. Yeah. I just too, too much energy, and then I had to be up too early. I got about two and a half hours. Yeah, that's I'll what we figured. Dead. I said under three. We thought under three. I guess three and a half, yeah. Uh, this was a phenomenal football game, by the way, and you had the spotlight all to yourself on ESPN on a, on a, on a Thursday night. I want to get your reaction to getting down 21-7, overcoming that adversity, coming out with the win, but just give me your thoughts on where you thought your football team was when you were down 21-7 to in that game. Yeah, when we, were, when we got down 21-7 to seven, and I saw the guys jog off the field and there was not one ounce of complaining. There wasn't, the dude hit me, they're holding me, or all these, you know, the people just complaining. I said, okay, we got a chance. And uh, we talked all week about the highs and lows of the game. We talked all year about adversity. We got to respond. And then we talked, hey, we haven't been hit in the mouth yet. We've been doing the punching in the first two weeks. Somebody's going to punch us first, and we're going to have to go the, the length of the fight. And uh, we got hit in the face twice, three times early, and we got back up and we finished it. And I uh, couldn't be more proud of uh, our guys for not getting rattled, just getting back up. I think I know the answer to this one. I've been dying to ask you this question ever since uh, I reached out to you this morning to come on the show. I think you. I think your answer is going to be you trusted your defense. But Simmons comes up with that big. He causes the fumble. Watley pounces on it. You got great field position. You're at their 23. You kick the field goal on a fourth and two. There's still plenty of time left. You're giving them the ball back only down three. Give me the decision there at that point in the game why you didn't go for it on fourth and two and why you just decided let's take the points and go up three. Yeah, obviously you guys know I'm a very aggressive guy when it comes to going for it. Uh, I have a belief that if you can change the amount of scores it takes to win the game, that you take the points. So when it's a tie game, uh, kicking a field goal obviously gives us the lead. So it really didn't matter if that was a fourth and a foot or a fourth and or a fourth and five. We were going to take the lead there and make them go score. And uh, if, if it would have been a one, if we would have had a one-point lead, a two-point lead, a three-point lead, a four-point lead, a five-point lead, we would have been go or a four-point lead, we would have been going for it. But in the tie game, uh, we want to be able to take the lead and uh, change the amount of scores it takes to win the game. Kenny Dillingham, our guest here on the Burns and Gambo Show, still in Texas, still recruiting even after last night's win against Texas State. You mentioned when they're coming off the field and you're down 21-7, no one's complaining, no one's you know doing anything. They're just getting back to work, ready to go. Did you know how your team was going to respond when they got punched in the face for the first time? Or were you curious to find out how your team was going to respond when punched in the face? Yeah, I had no clue. <laughs> I was honestly really nervous. I mean, I really was. Like, I had a belief of the type of people we have on this team, which are just filled with badasses, just guys who love ball, guys who are violent. I had a belief in that. and uh, But I was excited to see what happens when they got knocked down and our guys got back up. And I was, couldn't have been more happy with the response and the lack of flinch. You know, there was no flinch. And I think that's the part that's like, dang, like I can go to, I can, uh, I'm good. Like we got the right guys here right now because uh, they didn't flinch. Same question, but specifically about Sam Levitt. Did you know, or were you curious to find out what he had under the hood? I knew, I knew it was Sam. Uh, you know, Sam's brother. I mean, was a safety in the NFL. Like Sam, Sam in his next life is going to play strong safety. Like that's his <laughs> mantra. Like he's like, I need to run the ball in the first three plays. I need to get hit. No, you don't, but you're a quarterback. <laughs> you don't need to get hit. And, but that's his, that's his mindset. Right. He is, he's a dog. And when you run 
and get a targeting call against you and get smoked and get back up instantly, like that's who he is. And he's, he's just one of those guys that people can rally behind. behind. And he's a guy that I never doubted in terms of his game's going to get better in the toughest moments because that's who he is. I loved the 40-yard run that set up the touchdown to tied it at 28. That was a great run. Then he hits Harpole for 17 yards on the next pass to get you down, you know, inside the 10, and then Cam takes it in. But I got to ask you, you, you won three games all of last year. You're 3-0 and right now. You're the talk of the town. Could you have envisioned this? I mean, really, could you have envisioned that you would be 3-0 and at this point in the season? I mean, yes. I know that sounds crazy, but, uh, you know, I, I can't envision losing. Like, I, I, like I, I, I envision winning. Like, I don't ever envision losing a game. Like, I, I've never gone to a game, gone to a season saying, let's just get this amount of wins. Let's just achieve this. Let's, let's go win every game that we take the field in. And that's the mindset you should take is every single time you take the field, you're going to win. So did I envision this right here sitting at 3 Oh, yes. This is what I expected. There were some sensational defensive plays. I mentioned the one by Simmons and Watley and uh, Alfred on that deep pass with the interception. I really liked the stop by Keyshawn Elliott. Third and two, 23, real late in the game. Stops that running play. I, I think he got hurt in the celebration. Can you update us on, on his status? Yeah, a little bit of humidity got to him there. A little bit of a cramp. So he was celebrating, and he went down uh, with a cramp. But uh, who was the, uh, golly, who was the kicker for the Cardinals? God, uh, Grammatica. Down with the, Bill, yeah, Bill Grammatica. Bill Grammatica. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Just not nearly the type of injury Grammatica had. It was a much more subtle injury than, than uh, Grammatica. It was just a cramp. He just starts celebrating. He makes this big stop, and all of a sudden he calls <laughs> for the traders. He goes down on the ground. And then fourth and five, they go for it. Abney with that great pass breakup. Tell me how proud you are of all the big-time defensive plays that you got late in that football game. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, it's funny that when the game's on the line, the guys you trust the most make the play. So Keith's the guy who does everything right, uh, everything right in the program. Like, I don't know if I can tell you a negative about how he operates. He gets burned on a double move uh, earlier in the half, but the only points in the second half they score. But when the game was on the line, the guys who put in the work, the guys you trust make the plays. And if you look at that, when the game was on the line, Shamari – who I trust, caused the fumble. X picks the ball off, right? Alfred. Keyshawn has a big TFL, right? And it's just the guys who you trust make plays when the game is on the line. And we've got a lot of guys right now that I trust. Kenny Dillingham, our guest here on the Burns and Gambo Show, coming off the win last night against Texas State for Arizona State University. Um, we, the first practice after the Wyoming win, you said your team practiced like a 1-11 team. Then in the days that followed the Mississippi State game, you were insisting to anybody who would listen, we're still the underdog, we're still the nobody, we're still the this, we're still the that. Is that still the message from you when you guys get back together again next week? Do you feel like you still need to kind of kind of instill that, hey, we haven't done anything yet, or does 3-0 and change that equation for you as the head coach there? We still haven't won a Big 12 game. Okay. We still haven't hit the win total people projected us to hitting. Like, yeah, we started great. People projected us to start two and one. So we won one more game than we should. Cool. Like, cool. Like, we're nowhere close uh, to what we should be. We didn't really play great, to be honest. You know, we played below average. We got dominated up front on both sides of the ball for a lot of that game. Uh, they had a really good plan with the movements, and we couldn't handle it. Same thing on the on the D-line. We had some guys out, and we got run through. Uh, but even with all the MAs we had in the first half, even with the penalty that killed us, the two penalties that killed us, even with all that, we still found a way to win on the road while trailing. And I think that's what I'm proud of is we found a way when we didn't play a good game. And uh, I think that's the message to the guys is, We've got to continue to prove people wrong, but more important than that, we've got to continue to prove what we know we are, who we know we are right. Prove us right. Leave me with this. I was at the Mississippi State game, and Cam ran, Cam was terrific, and, and Sam had his struggles, but Cam was terrific. We, we talked all week about 
how everybody's going to load the box against you guys and try to take Cam out and try to make Sam beat you. Well, yesterday, Cam got shut down quite a bit, and Sam performed and had a very, very good game. Do you think that changes the dynamics? Do you think teams are still going to try to load the box to stop Cam? Or do you think the way Sam played yesterday, they'll play a little more balanced? I think a little more balanced, but at the end of the day, nobody wants – the game is still – can you stop the run? I mean, can you stop the most efficient plays in a team's offense, right? If you're an air raid team, it's can you stop quick game. If you're a run play action team, you have to stop the efficiency of a run. So I think the style of offense we are, teams are always going to want to stop the run first because that obviously eliminates play action, eliminates play action screens, it eliminates a lot of the game. So I think teams are still going to try to stop the run. And, and our uh, freshman quarterback in those wideouts, Jordan Tyson, uh, had an unbelievable game. Those guys are still going to have to go out there and uh, make plays on er- on early downs to get people to back up and understand that we're not a one-trick pony. We're going to be able to do multiple things, and uh, we're going to take what the defense gives us. Good luck on the recruiting trail. We appreciate you joining us so soon after that big win last night. We really appreciate the conversation. Coach, congratulations again. I appreciate it. Go Devils. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.